We're in the middle of a solar storm from some fast solar wind that is bringing us some aurora just in time to herald the new year. And a lone bright region on the Earth-facing disk is helping keep radio propagation just hovering about marginal. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun is ringing in the new year early with a solar storm that has brought a roar over many parts of the world. It's all come from this coronal hole that we are very familiar with. This thing has made more trips around the sun than I think I have. It's been with us since basically August, so this is what, like the sixth time that it's brought us a solar storm. It has now rotated into the Earth strike zone and it's sending us some fast wind that has bumped us up to storm levels. Now, we won't continue seeing storm levels for all that much longer, but we will continue to feel its effects easily over the next few days and maybe even over the next week as things slowly calm down. It's kind of hard to tell. But even on its tail, we have another coronal hole that will be rotating into the Earth strike zone in about 10 days. Now, it's not going to give us as strong a storm, but it could bring us a little bit more aurora, especially to high latitudes. Meanwhile, we have a lone bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now. It is not not given a number, so it's really not considered a sunspot, but it is brightening the uh, solar flux and bringing it up just enough that we're kind of hovering at the low end of marginal, high end of poor for radio propagation, and it looks like this trend will continue easily over the next week. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see we continue to be incredibly low with the X-ray flux, which by proxy means the solar flux is also very low. Luckily, we do have a single bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now. It is a weak region. It doesn't have a number, but it is managing to boost the solar flux up to keep us at the high end of 60s, almost in the low end of 70s. So this is good news for you amateur radio and shortwave radio responders. You're going to have some issues on Earth's day side when it comes to propagation, but at least it's not completely in the tank. And these conditions should continue easily over the next week, possibly over the next two weeks, because it looks like we see a couple bright regions on the sun's backside. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see we've actually been very quiet over the past couple weeks. In fact, we've only been sitting at normal conditions to maybe a little bit of unsettled conditions here and there, but for the most part, it's been very quiet. But then there on the 28th, you can see the fast wind started ramping up and we start seeing the effects. We bumped up to active conditions and then even made a G1 storm level. And that was when we saw some beautiful aurora that's almost kind of come down to mid latitudes. Then it's you can see we've gone back down to active conditions and we're going to be bumping between active and unsettled conditions most likely here over the next couple days and then probably a little bit more unsettled conditions as we approach the new year and it could bring us some more aurora especially at high latitudes. And although the ongoing solar storm has not been all that strong, it's managed to bring some gorgeous aurora views over many parts of the world, and it will continue heralding in the new year, hopefully continuing to bring us some gorgeous aurora, especially at high latitudes, like this in Norway. And it's seen in Sweden where it's not too overcast. We've got a couple field reporters that are very upset up there. It's also been seen in Scotland, and in Shetland, in the UK, it's been seen as we move over the pond, it's been seen all over Iceland, multiple days in Iceland, just beautiful time of year for them. Now, as we move over to the Western Hemisphere, it's been seen in multiple places in Canada, including Yellowknife, and several places in Manitoba. And we've even had a tiny peak of it down south in Tasmania. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see on the sun this week is actually the backside looks pretty busy. In fact, we had a solar storm launch right there on Christmas Eve. It is a backside launch, and unfortunately, the region and where all that activity was has since died out. So as it's rotated into Earth view, there's basically nothing left. It's kind of surrounded by that big coronal hole 
hole there. That's the next coronal hole after the solar storm we're having now that looks like it's actually going to give us another chance for aurora. But the other good news is also we have multiple uh, active regions on the sun's backside, and this is good for amateur radio and shortwave radio responders. This is the reason why it doesn't look like the solar flux is completely going to tank. We're going to hang on to these barely marginal conditions easily over the next week and, well, possibly two weeks. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are in an ongoing solar storm right now that has already bumped us up to minor storm levels and it will continue the activity over the next couple days. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 40% chance of a major storm. And as you can see, we should continue to storm at high latitudes easily into the new year. Now, at mid latitudes, we're also expecting active conditions. In fact, over the next day or so we'll probably bump up to active conditions and then back down to unsettled and up and down up and down just a little bit more but that should only last for about a day or two before things begin to calm down so it could be a quiet new year at mid latitudes and easily into the first week of january it will get back to pretty much quiet to normal conditions but we do have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the earth strike zone in about 10 days so we can get another chance for some more Aurora. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now, but that region is very weak and it doesn't have its own number, so officially the sun is spotless right now. We do not have a risk for big flares and therefore everything is in the green. No radio blackouts, so you GPS users should be very happy on Earth's day side. Now, amateur radio and shortwave radio responders, this bright region is actually boosting the solar flux just a little bit. So even though this says that we're in the high 60s, you should get a little bit of propagation uh, right now. And these conditions could easily last over this week and possibly into next week as some new regions rotate into Earth view. Now, because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic ray penetration is a bit higher than it would be normally. So you frequent flyers, and this includes you air crew uh, who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are having marginal range for radiation dose right now, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has gotten very exciting. The sun is ringing in the new year early with an ongoing solar storm that has brought us some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world. And this storming will continue, especially at high latitudes, over the next couple days, and it just sets a magical tone for 2019. Now, we also have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in just under two weeks. So, Aurora photographers, don't put your cameras away yet because you might get another shot, especially at high latitudes. Meanwhile, we also have a bright region that's crossing the Earth-facing disk right now, and it is managing to boost the solar flux just a little bit. So I know the conditions aren't great, but amateur and shortwave radio responders, we are at the hairy edge of marginal conditions right now, and it looks like these conditions will continue easily over the next week. And thanks to a couple bright regions on the sun's backside that will rotate into Earth view here over the next week or so, we could and continue to enjoy these conditions over the next two weeks. So that's something to be happy about. And now GPS users, well, the current solar storm that we're having is actually a bit strong. So especially on Earth's night side, near uh, the Aurora and near the Dawn Dust Terminators, you might have a few issues. So be sure to stay on your toes. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.